whispers among his comedic into peers and colleagues it really seem makes you to wonder indicate that Steve Harvey is going through a difficult time right now, and they are not holding back when they call what's going on exactly. Well, to start, it's no secret that Cat Williams thinks Steve Harvey is shady and has a lot of secrets in his closet. First of all, there have been persistent rumors that the well-known mustached ribcracker treats his staff like trash. Can you imagine? Please respect my personal space, but it stems from the four years that people have been abusing my generosity following his talk show's major transfer to Los Angeles. Harvey is said to have sent a startling memo to his new employees requesting items usually saved for tours. Writers, please don't stop by or hold meetings in my dressing room or just stopping by. Nobody should enter my dressing room unless they are invited. If you do, you should prepare to be kicked out. In a message acquired by Chicago blogger Robert Feeder in May 2017, Harvey wrote the memo went on to say, my security staff will prevent anyone who has if you want to talk to or see me on TV, crew, please cease the ambushing immediately. You need to make an appointment. Harvey said he was looking for more time to spend alone with me throughout the day, and he explained that the letter was sent to address the permissive open-door policy he had allowed during the run of his show in Chicago. He reaffirmed a similar defense a few days later while speaking with entertainment about the letter that was leaked. Tonight, while I sit in my makeup chair, Someone walks into my lunchroom without knocking. I'm in the corridor when people with friends who attend the performance ambush me, asking me to sign documents and complete tasks that I just don't want. It seems Williams has good reason to despise Harvey. In November 2015, the Think Like a Man author was sued for allegedly pulling out of plans to lease a private jet midway through more than $400,000 in debt. Williams responded, Wait a minute. And in hindsight, I probably should have handled it a little bit differently. Renovations on the aircraft that he had purportedly requested included, according to TMZ, new upper and lower cabin side walls, a custom seat design, and a restructuring of the interior cabin from 16 seats to 4. Almost a year after Harvey's claim was settled, he filed a new action against the Federal Aviation Title Company in an effort to obtain the $250,000 he had placed in escrow to rent the private jet. The money was granted to him by default after the business neglected to answer his case, as if that weren't sufficient. Recently, Cat Williams caused a stir when he conducted a lengthy interview for Shannon Sharp's club, Shay Shay Show. Among the elites Williams revealed were Steve Harvey Williams implied that he had copied Mark Curry's character from Hanging with Mr. Cooper on his show, the Steve Harvey Show. He also claimed that Harvey would never be a movie, the same Steve that went to watch Mark Curry film his entire sitcom and then stole everything Mark Curry, Curry, star, which is why he continues to host sitcoms and Family Feud. You question him, why are you not a movie star? I didn't want to be a movie star. Williams answers, there are 30,000 new scripts in Hollywood every year and not one of them is asked for. There isn't any such thing as a Mr. Potato Head-looking black country bumpkin who lacks communication skills. You need to have range. Ed Lover, in the meantime, appears to support Cat Williams' allegations regarding Steve Harvey and his issues with him. On January 5, the renowned DJ released a brand new edition of his Come on Sun podcast in which he supported Williams' account, which the comedian revealed in the most recent episode of the Club Shea podcast. He continues by saying that, following Bernie's passing, he was to be one of the kings of comedy, but he declined to go on the kings of comedy tour. After stating that he had been a friend of Bernie Mac's till the day of his death, Steve Harvey expressed his appreciation for Bernie Mac, despite the way in which the latter was treated. Aid Lover elaborated on what Cat Williams had mentioned regarding Steve Harvey's phone call attempting to secure Bernie's involvement in Ocean's 11 and the kind of information Bernie had shared me from his own lips. In my opinion, Bernie Mac provided context for his claim that Steve Harvey detested him. When Steve Harvey and three of his buddies embarked on a comedy tour known as the Original Kings two decades ago, they solidified their spot in the Comedy Hall of Fame and captured the attention of the entire world. Work of humor, the show was the most successful comedy tour ever at that point. Yes, 
The other three performers were D.L. High, Bernie Mac, and Cedric the Entertainer, all of whom had different styles. Not only did the show break box office records at the time, but it also helped pioneer what comedy shows have become today and also made use of content on African-American life in the United States and the divide between black and white. We had a nationwide TV show when Steve was H, and we had the Steve Harvey show. At the time, Bernie Mac was the most popular comic, and although DL was considered the smoothest at the time, he had a TV show called Harvey, which partially explains why he was able to make the move from stage to television with such ease. Nevertheless, he was also the most confrontational with the crowd, selecting targets in the front row and making remarks about their appearance, attire, and conversely, Bernie Mac adopted an alternative strategy that you could refer to as the most stern, and some of his writing even ventures beyond humor to explore the scars of real life. The first year we attempted this, it was just Steve Harvey, Bernie Mac, and me, as well as Steve Wright and Steve Close. However, it appears that Steve Harvey may have been envious of Bernie Mac's strategy, and that little bump is what developed into something that lasted for years. Or at least, that's what one of the band members appears to have just disclosed, and news of it is going viral on the internet. Steve had never done anything like that, and Ernie felt as though he was on his own path and didn't want to do it anymore. For many years, there have been rumors that there was friction between the late Bernie Mac and Steve Harvey during the original Kings of Comedy tour. However, other members of the group, such as Cedric the Entertainer, who participated in the tour with both Bernie Mac and Steve Harvey, are now addressing those rumors. Verified that the two comedians were not on the same page. Yeah, you know, they were the kind of guys that were both alpha males. You know, like they just saw it differently. You know what I'm saying? he added, but in the end, they were able to get through it. According to Shannon Sharp's podcast, Club Shay, one of the reasons you didn't do what you did in the first, first, and second parts was, you know, undoubtedly, that you were a contributing factor. However, that wasn't the only thing Bernie Mac had in 2003. An interview with GQ magazine in which he said Harvey was attempting to harm him in order to get him to play specific movie roles out of jealousy. In a 2010 interview, Steve addressed Max's charges and stated that Max's remarks had harmed him. However, other people, including Damon, also corroborated Max's claims. Williams, according to Bernie's statement in the GQ story, Steve had contacted the producers of Ocean's Eleven when he thought he would be a better fit. He tried to obtain the job and, well, you know what kind of thing you simply don't do but he wasn't exactly successful in purportedly attempting. To take Max's sparkle with Mark Curry, it appears the comic may have succeeded in that regard. Steve Harvey was my choice for the post after me, so tell me. He never said thank you. But what's going on between you and Steve? There's nothing wrong with me. Steve took my content for a show, so I had a beat on that now. The joke is below, in case you were wondering. Curry mentioned that since we couldn't afford a Halloween costume, he would send us to the booze shop and put boxes on us. I suppose we would ship it, but I'm not sure. This is Steve's interpretation of the situation. You've heard me mention that every Halloween, the same attire.